Uh, welcoming all of you to the Bhakti Sangha conference call. Today we are very, very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami Maharaj. Maharaj is going to enlighten us on the topic of Srimad Bhagatam, 5th Canto, 13th chapter, 23rd verse. Uh, I'll hand out the call to Praveen Govind Prabhuji to give brief introduction of His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami Maharaj. Hare Krishna Praveen Govind Prabhuji, please take over the call, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, my dear pranams to all the devotees on the call. His Holiness Chandas Chandra Mori Swami Maharaj is a disciple of his founder Acharya. His divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, and an initiating spiritual master within the Iskon movement. Maharaj was born in New Jersey, USA, in 1947. Maharaj came in contact with the International Society for Krishna Consciousness in Denver, Colorado at the age of 24. In 1973, he began practicing Krishna Consciousness in New York and shortly thereafter began serving at the new Vrindavan Farm community in West Virginia. The same year, he received initiation from His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. In 1986, Maharaj accepted sannyasa order began preaching in Cincinnati and Columbus, Ohio. In 1995, he began serving as a resident sannyasi in Chicago, Chicago, where he was based until 2013. Later, he relocated to Karlovac, Croatia. At present, Maharaj offers spiritual guidance around Europe, USA, and India. Hare Krishna. Dhanvat Pranam Maharaj. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam all goes to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for giving your valuable time and association to us on this auspicious day, Prabhupada Maharaj, and enlightening on the topic of Srimad Bhagatam. I'll hand over the call to you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, my obeisances to all the devotees. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gena Jena Salakaya Chaksu Un Milita Myena Tasmai Shri Gurudena Maha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine, Nirvasesa, Sunyavari, Pastyatya De Satarine, Panchakalpa, the Rubis Japripa, Sindhu Deva Japatita, Nam Pavane, Bio Vaishnava, Bio Nahone Maha, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakta Vindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we'll need to see the verse. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam. Canto 5, chapter 13, this is verse 23. This is further discussions between Jad Bharat and King Rahugana. Namo Mahadyo Stunamashishyubyo Namo Yuvagyo Nama Avadupyaha Ye Brahmanyagam Avadutalingas Charantite Vyar Shiva Astu Rajnam. Translation. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the great personalities, whether they walk on the earth's surface as children, young boys, Abhidudas, or great Brahmanas. Even if they are hidden under different guises, I offer my respects to all of them. By their mercy, may there be good fortune in the royal dynasties that are always offending them. Well, this is spoken by King Rahugana. 
purport. King Rahugana was very repentant because he had forced Jad Bharat to carry his palanquin. He therefore began offering prayers to all kinds of brahmanas and self-realized persons, even though they might be playing like children or hiding in some guises. The four Kumaras walked everywhere in the guise of five-year-old boys. And similarly, there are many brahmanas, knowers of Brahman, who traverse the globe either as young men, children, or avadutas. Being puffed up due to their position, the royal dynasties generally offend these great personalities. Therefore, King Rahugana began to offer his respectful obeisances unto them so that the offensive royal dynasties might not glide down into the hellish condition. If one offends a great personality, the supreme personality of Godhead does not excuse one, although the great personalities themselves might not take offense. Maharaj Ambarish was offended by Dorasa, who even approached Lord Vishnu for pardon. Lord Vishnu would not grant him pardon. Therefore, he had to fall down at the lotus feet of Maharaj Ambarish, even though Maharaj Ambarish was a Kshatriya Grihastha. One should be very careful not to offend the lotus feet of Vaishnavas and Brahmanas. Well, the prayer, these prayers by uh, King Rahugana are actually very uh, important because um, it's the great souls who are the via media between the Lord and the living entities. Although the Lord is directly related to each and every soul, within the heart, still, in order to approach the Lord, we have to approach the Lord by approaching the great souls. Yasya prashada, Bhagavat prashado, Yasya prashadan nagati kutopi. This is the last verse in the Guru Vastakam prayers, which we recite every morning in our temples, which indicates that only by pleasing the great souls, in this case, the spiritual master, then the door to spiritual life is clear, it's wide open. Otherwise, if one tries to approach the Lord without approaching these personalities, or in this particular case, we find here that those who somehow block their, re their relationship with the Lord by offending or neglecting or minimizing these great personalities, then um, there's no uh, recourse for such persons unless they um, atone or do something to ameliorate whatever activities they did that were in line with proper etiquette towards these great personalities. And then gradually, due to the mercy of the great personalities, the great personalities are great because one of the qualities of their greatness is that they are forgiving and very kind by nature. But that doesn't give one a license to continue to offend or minimize or neglect great personalities. So we understand for those who have a deep deep appreciation for the process of bhakti, that is the great personalities are that the foundation for one's spiritual advancement. And it's the great personalities that also can make it cause a block in our <clears throat> execution of devotional service. If we do not understand their relationship with the Lord and act according to that relationship. <laughs> Well, that is very uh, foundational. And uh, the great personalities are very forgiving, of course. But one should <clears throat> see that this is where spiritual life is uh, developed. These, uh, there's an example here that it was given in the purport. 
Srila Prabhupada points out how for no apparent reason, actually just being envious of this great King Maharaj Ambarish, Virasa Muni, who has a tendency to get angry quite easily, uh, exp expressed that anger towards his great personality. So much so that for no reason at all, he wanted to, uh, he wanted to kill Maharaj Ambarish. And he created a fiery demon <clears throat> in order to do that. He was, a, he was a mystic yogi and he had great powers. But this fiery demon was destroyed by the Supreme Lord directly. When the Lord saw his devotee took shelter of him and immediately the Lord threw his chakra and killed the demon. And at that time, Darasa was in great distress knowing that he now, the chakra was coming after him. He went all the way to um, Vishnu Loka and approached Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu appeared in a manifestation of himself. He didn't come directly because he wouldn't appear before such personalities directly, but he came in an image of himself in order for Duvasya to approach him. And then the Lord explains that, you know, I can't do anything. Uh, the devotees, the pure devotees are in my heart and I'm in the hearts of my pure devotees. Oh, <clears throat> I know one, I know no one but my pure devotees and my pure devotees know no one but me. So this is a very powerful statement by the Lord himself, which indicates his relationship with his pure devotees or those who have surrendered everything to him in devotional service. And so, um, therefore, Devasa only had one recourse. He had to find, fall at the feet, as it's mentioned here, of Maharaj Ambarish. And only then was he relieved from the uh, offense. <clears throat> Otherwise, there was no hope for Devasa Muni. So um, we see how, and here what uh, King Rahugana is indicating here is that we don't know who these great personalities are. They may be Avadudas, they may be children playing, they may be just small boys. They can be in any, any position like that. Um, we have the example of Chaivan Muni. Chaivan Muni, um, I can't remember all the details, but he had taken the form of a worm in a hole for a particular reason. And uh, the Aswini Kumaras uh, mistakenly didn't not recognize him and um, caused him great distress. And then they were forced to uh, realize that this was a great personality who had taken a different form. And they uh, fell at the feet of Chaivan Muni. And then they had to render some service. He forgave them. This is an indication in this particular pastime how one might not recognize great souls. But, but we should understand from this verse that it's not only great foes, uh, souls that we should avoid offending. Uh, any offense to any living entity causes a reaction upon that person who is offending. So therefore, one of the offenses just to offend people in general, ordinary people can also be offended even by devotees if one does not understand proper etiquette and behavior even in, in respect to apparently ordinary people. So a devotee, in order to somehow guard against possibility of committing offense, one has to practice certain characteristics and qualities 
which allow one to become free from the offense of mentality. And one of those characteristics and qualities is to be always in the mood of serving. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an interesting point because if one is not in the mood of serving in any relationship they are in, then um, there's a chance that one will try to enjoy that situation or might mistakenly cause an offense simply by the wrong mood. So, um, of course, sometimes a person accepts services in order to give service, but generally the mood is to always be in the mood of serving. If one is always in the mood of serving or in the mood of trying to learn, both of those uh, principles act as protectors of any possible offense that one can uh, undergo. We have the example of how even great souls offend other great souls <clears throat> and they also fall down. So here we had an example of uh, this one great uh, pundit. His name was Rupa Kaviraj. And he would travel around and he was very learned in the Shastras. And his followers would arrange for him to give those discourses to people in general. So he became quite reputed as a great knower of the Vedas and could speak very convincingly and very powerfully and transform people's minds in devotion. One time when in one of his lectures, uh, another great personality, her name was Krishna Priya. She had come to sit and listen in his lecture. Now, one of the qualities of Krishna Priya is that she would always chant the holy names of the Lord 24 hours a day. There was never a time when there was not, not the holy name coming from her lips. She was constantly chanting. So when she came in, and sat towards the very back of the assembly, she was still chanting, but she was also listening to what was being said. Now, Rupa Kaviraj became very disturbed by that, seeing that she was sitting there, apparently listening to his lecture, but still chanting. So in a very angry, in a very, abrasive way he called her attention to her wrong attitude which he thought was wrong and he spoke very harshly to her in the assembly in front of everyone she remained quite composed and humble and continued to chant the holy names of the lord but he had offended her quite strongly in his and his harsh language so uh, not long after that, he was on a very high platform of bhakti. He had almost reached the platform of bhava, practically on the verge of pure love of God. But because of his offense, he fell down to the lower, to the lower stages and actually lost all his ability to speak. Um, this is an indication how one should be very careful because here we see and this is analogous to the story i just indicated is that persons who are in the royal order have big powerful positions and they tend to become a little bit controlling and and pride prideful of their position so king rahugana knows that and he says he begins to offer respectful basis unto these great souls so the royal dynasties will not offend these great personalities and fall down into a hellish condition of life and so we see that um, how these things do happen there are many kings who have said, committed offenses and lost their, and was forced to 
he, we even have the example of Maharaj Nidra, King Nidra, he was a king. But there was, it was an accidental offense against two brahmanas. It wasn't even intentional. But still, he had to suffer and take birth as a lizard for one birth. So this is an example of how one should be very uh, aware of how a slight discretion can cause a uh, discord in a relationship, especially with great souls. So therefore, one practice the mood of service. And how what does that practice that? By always cultivating Lord Chaitanya's teachings. Lord Chaitanya gave so many instructions, but one of the most important instruction that he gave was Trinadapi Sunni Chena, Tayor Iva Suhishnuna, Amanina Mamana Dana Kirtaniya Sadalahi. The humility, tolerance, pridelessness and not asking respect for oneself are the characteristics of those who engage in devotional service. And what, what will be the result of those who cultivate that mood, then kirtaniya sadadahi, then they can always chant the holy names of the Lord. And so Lord Chaitanya has given us the blueprint of the personality characteristics of how one should execute devotional service. And as it's explained further in this, this is the ornament of a devotee. It's what is, the, what is it, the ornament of a devotee? Not so much how much they know, or even how much they can speak about how much they know. What is their ornament is their character. And their character is always exemplary. exemplary in terms of their relationship to the Supreme Personality of God and all living entities. Of come, sometimes you'll see, now here also is mentioned, that there are persons who appear in, in disguises, as it's mentioned here, in guises of children and young and avidudas. An avaduta is a person who is a great soul but cannot be recognized because their behavior seems to be a little bit different. Lord Nityananda was sometime is also given the name Avaduta. And he would do things that um, would astound people. Sometimes he would run and dive into the water and chase after crocodiles. And then Lord Chaitanya would have to call him back. And so he would not be injured by these crocodiles or sometimes we see personalities such as the four kumaras jai and vijay not knowing the greatness of these four children spoke harshly to them and blocked their entrance into vaikuntha although they were qualified to go and see and meet lord narayan so even these great gatekeepers who sit on the on the outskirts of the spiritual world, guarding the gates, such great personalities, they fell from their position because of offenses towards the four Kumaras. So King Rahugana's prayers are quite interesting. He is um, wanting to, to, to under, give a clear understanding that there is a tendency or there is a great possibility, we might say, that people who have powerful positions materially will not recognize and may even commit offenses to great personalities. This goes on even today. In today's society, people don't give any importance to, to religious people or they are simply minimized and marginalized. And if there's any importance given, it's all only tokenism in order for them to get some kind of benediction. But we see, we understand that from the Vaishnava and from the uh, uh, Sanatana Dharma point of view, 
that the leaders in society, the kings and other and other leaders, must take advice from great souls on how to manage the, and lead the people they are in charge of. But we don't get that. They don't take advice. Sometimes they don't take advice from anybody. And they simply go on. And if spiritual people speak out against such personalities, they are quick to respond and uh, challenge them or even minimize them. So this is today's Kali Yuga. Religious people in today's society, true religious people, are not given any uh, any credence, any uh, position, unless they align themselves with the elite and they simply go along with what the elite says, and then they're given some position, some you know gratuity like that. But that is not the duty of a Brahmana, the duty of a Brahmana is to instruct those who are in organizational leadership in order so they can carry out their duty and benefit the people and not simply exploit the people or mistakenly exploit the people. So this is a very uh, interesting verse here. Uh, and the prayers by King Rahugana are fundamental to understand, um, yes, Great personalities in the material world. So he's praying. He's praying for their benefit. He prays that they will be able to recognize and simply honor these great personalities. A great personality is not always understood simply by seeing him. A great personality is only understood by their, their words. Their words are actually the um, <clears throat> the indication of what is actually a great personality and not only that their behavior both of them together their words and their behavior and especially their behavior like that um, there are two ways to associate with the spiritual master one is called vani and the other one is called Vapu. Vani means by hearing, understanding, and carrying out the instructions given by the spiritual teachers. That is called Vani Seva, or serving the instructions of the spiritual master, which are the highest principle of service. But there is another level and that is called Bapu. Bapu is lesser, that is personal association, having the opportunity to be in their association. But Bapu is beneficial or can be unbeneficial. Uh, Prabhupada makes this point that when one is in the association of a great personality, if one commits offense or acts wrongly, Rather than benefiting from that association, they could also go down. So one should be more eager to hear from, and of course, that association means to hear. That is the association that we look for in great personalities. We want to hear from them. And we also want to understand how to apply that knowledge so we can improve in our practice of devotional service. So this is very much important. In fact, it's not only important, it is the basis of our success in Krishna consciousness. And so King Rahugana is concerned not only for himself, he made a mistake, he commit, he didn't recognize Jed Bart. He was criticizing him for his apparent inability to carry his palaquin. But Judd Bart's reason for that is that when they were walking along, he saw some ants. And so in, not, in order not to step on these ants, he moved side to side. And that caused the jostling of the palaquin and the king was being 
bounced up and down. So he didn't really like that at all. And so he was very uh, uh, quick to find fault with Judd Bart. And he did it. But then when Judd spoke, then he understood his offense. And now he's, he's giving his confession, not only for himself, but he's praying for those who are also in the royal order that they also don't follow in his footsteps. It's interesting, King Rahugana, when he was in Caribbean carrying on the palanquin, he was going to Kapila Ashram to go to, to offer some prayers in a holy place. It's interesting that he was on his way to a spiritual pilgrimage when uh, he got connected with Jad Bharat. So rather than he got the benefit of the instructions from Jed Bard without even reaching the holy place. So he was very fortunate, despite the fact that he had committed some offense in the beginning. Okay, so we'll stop there and uh, we'll open it up for discussion. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for a very wonderful class, Maharaj. It's very instructional. Thank you, Maharaj. If any anybody have any question, please uh, unmute yourself and go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for such a beautiful class. Thank you for uh, uh, stressing on the point that we should not offend not only the pure devotee, but also anybody. We don't know who is what. So that, that point was very, very nice in the class. And also the association of Guru is, uh, there is two ways, Vani, um, Vani and Babu Seva. So that, that point also I really like, Maharaj. Thank you so much for such a beautiful class today morning. <clears throat> Very nice to hear from you. Hare Krishna. Hare well, my obeisance is, I don't know who's speaking, but my obeisance is to you. Hare you Krishna can. Maharaj, this is Vinita Gandharvika Devidasa. Sorry Maharaj, I have some problem with my camera. Uh, I, I cannot on the camera. Sorry, sorry Maharaj for that. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanva Pranam. Hare Bol, Raj Prabhu. Hare Bol Maharaj. Thank you Maharaj, such a beautiful class Maharaj. Um, Maharaj, uh, for somebody unfortunate like me, who does not have a spiritual master yet, so how we uh, get the concept of Vapu Seva? Uh, can we do Vapu Seva to our uh, uh, mentors, to our uh, Shiksha Gurus? So how, how is it Maharaj? Because it is so pleasant to listen even of Vapu Seva when uh, we can um, help the lotus feet of our uh, spiritual master and even massage them or, or you know, this is what Vapu Seva is, what I understand. So how, right. so how, uh, how to, to do that? Like, should I go to my, my mentor, to my Shiksha Guru or how is it Maharaj? Please, please enlighten. You're looking for a personality to do Vapu Seva to, that you can consider to be someone who you are getting directions from. Is that the question? <laughs> yes, Maharaj. You know, um, uh, service is, is something that gives so much happiness, Maharaj. Without service, it uh, seems like uh, there is no life at all. So, and I continue listening Vapu Seva in different lectures. And uh, I'm like, okay, one day I will do Vapu Seva to my, to my Maharaj when I find my spiritual master. But until then, uh, should I just massage uh, feet of my deities? What should I do, Maharaj? <laughs> I think you have to decide for yourself on that one. <laughs> Maharaj, I need your guidance. I am still uh, in uh, darkness, Maharaj. I need your, your guidance. Um, it's not, you know, you could always, uh, there is different ways to, to do seva to personalities. Now you can just serve the devotees in general by 
being with the devotees. We have what is called the, the six exchanges of love between devotees. And one of them is to offer prasadam to the devotees. So sometimes you could cook and offer prasadam or find maha prasadam and offer that to any devotee. It doesn't have to be someone who is in any position. Anyone you feel inspired to. Um, you have a whole field to choose from. <laughs> There's so many personalities. You just have to find the opportunity to associate. And of course, we do associate during programs. When we associate during programs, that's a good time to do Vapu Seva or even to arrange for Vapu Seva. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maharaj. I, I mean, many times when I'm like, I come to a program and I meet someone and someone comes up to me and they want to do some seva and they want to, you know, they're, and I say, fine. <laughs> and sometimes I say, well, there's no need, but if you want to do something, you can, you know, determine what you want to do like that. So, yeah, it's not hard. You just have to just get, get association and then choose who you want to offer your seva to. Okay, Maharaj, please bless me so I can at least cook well because with my cooking, uh, most of them will run away. <laughs> Not come to me. They'll, they'll be running because they're happy, right? Okay, Maharaj. Arrivo. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anybody who wants to go ahead with your questions? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, then the word pranam, Gurish to you Maharaj. Thank you so much for the very instructive class, uh, especially for the offenses, you know, how we fall down into the, um, you know, like uh, lower spaces or Somewhere, you know, even Jai Vijaya, they fell down and they became a demon and you know, somebody just uh, lost the speaking ability. So it's a big uh, thing, Maharaj. It's so how, how to get that mood to be humble all the time. And sometimes, you know, we give some instruction to someone Again, we make some offense. That person feel offended, uh, even though we correct them or the service they did, we don't like it, and they they did something wrong, and we just said quickly that oh, you shouldn't do this. You should have done this way, and they feel offended. So, how to you know? keep uh, ourselves away from these offensive offenses you know even we want to be humble all the time but this mind you know is not really ready to take up that it's say like, oh i can do better than that like that so well, if you are going to instruct someone for apparently doing something wrong you should consider what will be the outcome? Will that person become angry? Will the person become uh, unhappy? Uh, well, I'm not unhappy, but angry or uh, start arguing back. So you should always think ahead of time, is it your position to correct that person or not? If it is, then, then you can do it, but you have to do it in such a way that, that it is not done in a mean way, but in a way to, you have to, you have to speak pleasingly, but at the same time, uh, get your point across. So that should be done when in giving instructions. Now, there are three people, or three positions, I should say, that the guru 
is responsible to instruct the disciple. The parents are responsible to guide their children, and that means instructions. And the teachers in the classrooms also have to guide their students. So they have to correct because it's for the benefit of the persons they're correcting. But it should always be done in the right mood. And yet, but if you're not in that position, then you might think, should I correct or should I just leave it go? And you have to decide. Yes, yes, Maharaj, very important. Sometimes, you know, all the time we don't mean that and uh, they feel offended. We, we don't mean to offense anybody and they feel offended. Yeah, so if you speak pleasingly and nicely, then that'll... Uh, that is an art. You have to learn that art to speak yes. in a corrective way, but very pleasingly. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, a lot of blessings from you, Maharaj. So I should go uh, in a correct way in devotional service and not offend anybody. If you always pray to Krishna to for guidance, then it becomes... It becomes successful. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Uh, Maharaj, there is a question from Seema Agarwal Mataji. She is asking uh, that, uh, is it okay if I do my chanting alone with hearing my Bhagavatam lecture? At the same time? Yes. No. <laughs> no. Focus on neither chanting or on the Bhagavatam. Let them both. Just make time for both. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, because you, when you're engaged in devotional activities, you want to get absorbed. Now, the, the example of Krishna Priya, we should not try to imitate that. You think, well, Krishna Priya, yeah, she was okay, but she was sitting there listening at the same time she was chanting. But she was, she was on a very high spiritual platform. And you can't imitate that and expect to get the same benefit. No, we should, uh, we should not try to imitate these great souls. And she could not stop chanting. That was her situation. Even if she wanted to stop, she couldn't. She was absorbed. Spontaneously, the holy name was always with her. Um, Maharaj, can you speak a little more about uh, Krishna Priya? Yes. I don't know so much about her. Um, you'd have to do a little bit of research. She's one of the great saints during i'm not sure what year i think it was before the before the appearance of lord chaitanya yeah you can look it up she's available just do a little search krishna priya thank you much Hare Krishna. Hare. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, uh, I don't know whether I can please my Guru Maharaj or not, but uh, I'm trying to please devotees. So if we please devotees, Guru Maharaj will be pleased. And if Guru Maharaj is pleased, Krishna, obviously he will be pleased Maharaj. But when we are trying to be humble, with, um, it is very difficult to be humble all the time. Uh, sometimes misunderstandings come in between uh, devotees and non-devotees but how can we get rid of those feelings Maharaj I don't, we don't know whether we have done a mistake or not but uh, sometimes because of misunderstandings uh, we'll be we, we should examine 
how we are acting in, in, in a particular situation and whether we're acting in the right way, speaking in the right way or not. And if we, if we realize afterwards there needs to be some improvement, then we can learn from that experience. And next time we can be more aware of how, how to avoid what we should avoid. So um, life is a learning experience. It's not you reach perfection simply by having the desire to be perfect. You have to practice. And when it comes to qualities, devotional qualities, and they, we call it cultivation of these qualities. You have to practice humility. You have to practice tolerance. Don't expect it's going to be perfect or even maybe even not even close on the, as we begin practicing. We have to practice. That's it. Learn from your mistakes. Try to avoid them. Understand what is the proper way and uh, move forward in that way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah, don't, don't be too harsh on yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sometimes that will be so difficult, Maharaj. Yeah. yeah. Should forgive yourself when you make a mistake, but learn from that mistake and then, you know, go on. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Maharaj. Hey, Krishna. <laughs> Lalita Tangi, you have a question? <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances and your lotus feet. Thank you so much uh, for your very, very wonderful association. A very nice lecture, Maharaj. So, uh, I wanted to ask about uh, this quality that uh, um, in Nectar of Instruction that says that I want the association of that devotee whose heart is uh, freed from uh, the tendency to find faults. Nindadi Shunya Hridayam Ipshita Sangalabdhya. So, uh, I mean, this is one quality that uh, has been mentioned as uh, uh, I mean, uh, as a ad advanced devotee's uh, quality. So how to, I mean, this I find that uh, the maybe is that the root uh, cause of the offenses that uh, I commit is that linked to that. And how do we, how do we have that quality, Maharaj? Not to find fault in everyone, a dosha darshi, it's called. Uh, yeah, well, that's the process of bhakti. Develop, develop your chanting, get a taste for the holy name, and raise your consciousness up and start to see things more clearly. What is that clear? Clear is that, yes, people have good qualities and people have faults, so seeing those good qualities and faults side by side. When you see a fault, look for a good quality at the same time. And then focus on that instead of focusing on the apparent fault. Yeah, everyone has both. You can choose where you want to uh, put your attention. Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, that's very true that um, by only by elevation of consciousness, which comes by uh, improving the chanting, can we see this? That's a very wonderful solution. Thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Will you be joining us tomorrow? Uh, not tomorrow, but Monday? Uh, yeah, yes, Maharaj. I'm, um, oh, no, in, you're coming to Dallas, right? In mon on Monday? Yeah, so I will I'll be unavailable, and I was told that you will be the speaker. <laughs> uh, I'll, uh, I'll, um, I'll speak something, Maharaj, by your, uh, by your mercy and whatever you cause me to speak. Thank you, Maharaj. I think with all those great personalities, right, in your same room, you'll get all the mercy you need. 
when looking at all these great personalities who are just giving you blessings right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They are from Jagannath Baldev and Shubhadra from Toronto, Maharaj. Hmm. Wonderful. They're at your house. No, no. It is just the wallpaper. Uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> very good. Very good wallpaper. <laughs> yeah, background. You can't help but becoming Jagannath conscious. Uh, by your mercy, Maharaj, we are. Uh, you're always constantly inspiring us. Yeah, I must... we, sometimes we, we criticize people. He's just staring at the wall. <laughs> but if he stares at that wall, he'll have he'll make much, much progress simply by staring at the wall. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please uh, accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, I have a question uh, which, uh, which says about uh, the anger. Though we, uh, we are like about to control the anger, but still what happens is at some times, uh, many times we are controlling, but at some times it comes out. Uh, so, uh, so that means uh, uh, like uh, we are uh, keeping patience uh, in so many situations. We are doing all works uh, which is uh, given to us and uh, every uh, service we are doing. But still what happens is sometimes the anger comes out without knowing and uh, the other second we realize and uh, we regret for it. But again, what happens is after a few days, again it comes. So what can be done, uh, Mother uh, Maharaj, for that? Seeing the situation before it happens. If you know, if you've seen before how you have... Uh, apparently offered some anger in a situation and you regretted it later, you learn from that. Then you see the situation is coming. And so it could happen again. So we have to be pretty much aware of how we're going to react and react or not react to a certain situation. So, I mean, some people have a very strong emotional nature and therefore if that gets disturbed and that anger may also come out without it without any cause but you should be aware of that and learn how to control that forgiveness is the antidote that uh, overcomes the possibility of creating anger learning how to forgive thank you Thank you, Maharaj. But what happens is when we forgive the opposite side, they take it as it, it's advantage for them. And it's again, they, are, uh, they tend to step over and over. So what can, so, so how much ever we forgive it, so it happens again and again. So well, you have to see what is, your, what, is your, what, is your, what is your relationship with that person? Is it a friend? Is it a family member? Is it a family member, family, family. You know, family members, usually family members always offending other family members. That's like, <laughs> they take advantage of each other. And they say, uh, they say familiarity breeds contempt. <laughs> yeah, you just have to be aware of that. Sometimes because of that, people go away. Uh, in order to... Yeah, but... Uh, uh... Uh, but when it is in a family, we cannot uh, tend to move away also. It's like in the same house we are uh, and we have to see each other's face. So, so it's not possible for us to go away also. So yeah. that is well, for... Well, you have to see yeah. what is your... Uh, if, you're, if, if it's children, then you have to make corrections. If it's a relative, then you have to develop some kind of relationship. Or if you can't develop that relationship, whatever, I mean, a good relationship, then you have to somehow or other, uh, I don't know, you have to discuss it. Even approaching people with the desire to discuss the problem 
might avoid the problem in the future. Hmm. Okay. No, you, okay, just say, you just say, you know, um, I'm getting angry and uh, you're doing the same thing all over again and it's causing me. So let's uh, uh, try to find out why they're causing you to get angry or maybe even there's no need for you to get angry. Maybe you just, sometimes we get angry just because we're not, we're in a bad mood or we're not in a good mood and somebody does something and it just sets us off. Or say we're experiencing some pain and somebody comes and does something to disturb us. Because the pain is there, we become easily angered when we get a disturbance. Or uh, we have to see, you know, what is, if can we can ameliorate the situation by discussion so it doesn't happen again. If you can, sometimes we get angry because there's a personality clash. This happens mm -hmm. too. People's personalities don't go together. <laughs> and that happens sometimes mm -hmm. in families. The personalities mm -hmm. are different. And when personalities are different, you have to recognize that and learn to work with it in order to carry on the affairs of the family. So you can expect some disharmony just because of personality differences. Two people see the same situation differently. Two people yeah. react to the same situation differently. All these have to, all these are done by Krishna consciousness. The more Krishna conscious that we are, the more we can easily uh, understand how to act or not react in, in a particular situation on our Krishna consciousness. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Okay. Yeah, just be tolerant. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what. Uh, so I'm hearing uh, the tolerant topic, uh, which is going on in uh, this fifth canto between uh, Jada Bharat and uh, Ravana. So I can, I can, so I, I can give, so these, I can these give, things are coming can, in my mind. Yeah, I can give you a little formula. When you see somebody's yeah. causing you to get angry, before you say anything, look within yourself and say. Why am I getting angry? Hare Krishna. So that will be that will be very much very much helpful. Yeah. It's very helpful. What yes, is yes, what yes. is it about me that's causing me to become disturbed by the situation? Mm. Correct. That's thank, bhakti, you, thank you so much, Maharaj. That's Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance with Agoristo Srila Prabhupada and Agoris to you. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, this uh, very nice class. And my question would be connected to the previous one. You spoke about uh, that uh, it happens that uh, there might be some kind of personality clash. And um, uh, could you explain it if it happens also on, on the spiritual platform or it's uh, completely a material type of thing? No, it's always... It, it happen, can happen not on the spiritual platform, but it can happen among spiritually, spiritual people. On the spiritual platform, everything is, is, is harmonious, but spiritual people who are, gay, who are associating with the, uh, each other can also uh, fall into that uh, apparent uh, contradiction not understanding each other, misunder it's all due to misunderstanding based on different personalities, different ways of seeing the situation, different types of conditionings, different uh, motivations. Uh, yeah, I say thank you very much. It's, uh, it's really so difficult sometimes to properly communicate because we are always have these uh, preconceptions and uh, and 
really it's uh, it's so easy to fall into that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you just have to not communicate or you have to just somehow or other become very, very compassionate and try to speak in it from that point of view. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. It's, uh, as you previously said, it's, it's really an art how to, how to communicate with others. and Especially I, in Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is, <laughs> Kali Yuga, there is so much discourse even on all levels of existence because people misunderstand each other, have different, Prabhupada even talks about that in the Bhagavatam. People lean towards material tendencies, even in spiritual circles. And therefore there is some disharmony. Yes. May I just uh, some very, very so uh, short uh, story about Yamuna Mataji, which uh, inspired me in, uh, in this, this yeah. topic. Yeah. Uh, so I remember I, I, I read a one short story when uh, one Mataji narrated that um, in the morning they were going uh, to the temple room. And uh, just before they stepped into the temple room, Yamuna Mataji turned to, him, uh, tur turned to her and uh, told her that uh, we will uh, put you on tilak, and this way you will be even, uh, even more beautiful. And uh, it was so touching because uh, she could have said just that, oh, you should put tilak before going uh, to, to meet the deities, but, uh, but she, she put it in a, uh, in a way that it was so inspiring also and, and uh, so much uh, caring in it. So I, I really like this story. It's, it's really such an inspiration for me that uh, it's, it's, uh, it, this kind of things, many, in many cases, it can, can be communicated in a nice way. Yeah, nice story. Jamuna had, had a way of being very gracious. That was her quality. Outstandingly gracious in every situation. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for a wonderful question and answer session. Uh, anybody want? Anybody right. have any questions or realizations you want to share in the group? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. I just wanted to say thank you for all of your answers to all of the questions that were asked today. They were all so practical and um, just such good instruction, <laughs> you know, because everything that they asked or, you know, I think most of us suffer with at some point and um, it's always so challenging to deal with, deal with those situations and your instructions were just so um, practical and also inspiring at the same time and so loving, so loving, such, such, such a good, you know, heart. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. My obeisance is to you. You, uh, thank you for these nice words coming from your good heart. <laughs> No, but it's, it's the mercy of all of the, the devotees on this call. I, it's such good association. I'm so grateful. So grateful. And thank you so much for coming every week and, and inspiring us in so many ways. You have such a beautiful, gentle way of communicating things. However, you're also very direct, which is, is such a gift, such a gift. So thank you. Thank you, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay, should we end here? Mm -hmm. I think we can end here. Yeah, um, if nobody, go ahead. If nobody have any questions, uh, <clears throat> we can end the call here. Let us pay obeisances to Maharaj and all the devotees. 
ಹೌಸ್ in one of the most amazing families all vaishnavas the entire family is huge family too they all chant hari krishna they all read shrimad bhagavatam they all discuss chaitanya charitamrita and they all they all have so many deities on their altar it takes like hours just to see them all um <laughs> Wow. They, amazing. And they serve, the, they serve the deities all day. So I've been here for a few days and now I'm leaving New Haven, Connecticut. One nice devotee named Srinivas Acharya and his good wife. And we'll be in Hartford, Connecticut Sunday for the Sunday Feast program. So that's my next two days. and then i'm going to take a trip to texas after that <laughs> so maybe we'll meet somewhere on the on the trail thank you so much maharaj thank you for this so wonderful session of uh, today and all the question and answers were really really great uh, the way you answered it was really very helpful maharaj thank you so much thank you and have thank a wonderful ikadasi thank you so much thank you thank you thank you so much maharaj hare krishna hare krishna see you all again soon hare krishna maharaj dandavat radha radha krishna hare krishna hare